Hi there, this is Scott with Great Scott Knitting Dyes Yarn, Episode 5. Today I am dyeing two 100 gram skeins of Dyer Supplier 8020 Merino Nylon Yarn. It is 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. This merino wool comes from South American sourcing and is mule zing free. Mule zing, a procedure named for its inventor John Mules, removes strips of wool bearing skin from the butt of the merino lamb. This prevents a certain type of fly from burrowing into the folds of skin and laying larva, which can make the sheep ill and potentially kill them. This procedure is, however, painful and typically done without any anesthesia. The fly species is native to Australia, so the process is almost exclusive to merino from that area. Many buyers of merino wool look for mulesing free wool as it is seen as a cruel practice. So I'm very happy to be using this yarn, which is mulesing free. I have to admit, I have no inspiration going into this dyeing experiment. All I know is that I'm going to try pouring the color directly on the yarn in a low immersion pan. I have seen other indie dyers do this and thought, hmm, why not? Note, I have no idea what I'm doing. For color inspiration, I went to my husband who suggested colors from his favorite roller coaster, the defunct Orient Express from Worlds of Fun. So red from the track and black from its logo, and I decided to add a gold color as that it was also from the logo. This was perfect because I've been wanting to play with black. The skeins of yarn have been soaking in some cool tap water for about an hour, and I've removed most of the water from the first skein and arranged it in this shallow roasting pan. I have not added any water to the pan, as that will come as I add the dye. For the red, I have diluted 20 drops of crimson food coloring from the Wilton Color Right kit which is only red 40, um, and I put that in a half cup of tap water. Note that I'm wearing gloves and I'm going to manually work this dye into the yarn so it gets a better penetration all the way down to the bottom section. For the black, which is a mix of blue 1, red 40, yellow 6, red 3, and yellow 5, I added 20 drops of that food coloring also to a half cup of tap water. I'm also going to manually manipulate the dye into the fiber with this black as well. For the gold, I created my own custom color by taking 10 drops of yellow, which is yellow 5, and 2 drops of orange, which is yellow 6. I'm adding that to this middle section between the red and the black. I'll also do a little bit of manual manipulation to try and uh, massage that into the fibers. I'm now adding some heat to my 
roasting pan to, and I'll bring this to a, a simmer. As that is starting to heat up, you can see my husband taking a look at the colorway that he inspired. I'm now going to add some vinegar water to my dye bath to give it a little bit more moisture because um, I don't want the heat to scorch the yarn as there's really not much liquid in the pan. You can see that when I did this, the black started oozing towards my red, which is not at all what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to take some paper towel and put it into the middle of my dye bath to act as a barrier to keep that black from seeping over into my gold and my red on the other end of the dye pot. Now what's really interesting is that with the when I added this um, paper towel, you can see the black broke on the paper towel into this sort of green color, which um, is really interesting. I am going to add a little bit more vinegar to this dye bath. Um, as you can see, it it is coming up to uh, a simmer temperature and so I'm going to add um, quite a bit of uh, acid to this dye bath so that this color will absorb uh, more deeply into the fiber. With that vinegar added I'm going to adjust my temperature so it remains at just a simmer and allow it to go for about 15 minutes to absorb the color. After actually about 25 minutes, um, you can see that most of the color has absorbed into the yarn. I'm going to go ahead and remove this pan from the heat and just allow the yarn to cool directly in the pan and um, then I will rinse it and allow the skein to dry and we'll look at the results at the end. For my second skein, I started out thinking that I would just dye half in a deep black blue, then speckle the other half in black. But seeing how the black broke, I altered my plan. I did create this custom blue-black color using 20 drops of blue, which is blue one, uh, three drops of red, one drop of pink, and four drops of black. Honestly, I was just playing to see what color it created. It did look really good, and so I went with it. I'm going to start dip dyeing the skein immediately, and I'm going to move it around to try and expose as much fiber to the color in the pot as possible. You can see that really lovely blue um, on, the, on that very edge there 
but you can also see the reds as it is striking the rest of the yarn, creating a deep purple. I'm going to move the yarn around a little bit in the pot so to give it a more uniform access to the fiber so that the colors aren't as tonal as they could be. Um, this will just help provide more access to that dye. I'm then going to leave this half skein in this pot for about five minutes to absorb a lot of that color. I forgot to turn the camera on and in the meantime I have dip dyed the rest of the skein in the partially exhausted dye bath to get this tonal gradient in the light blues that go from uh, that deep blue all the way through to a really light blue on the very tip. Um, it's a really pretty colorway that I think is, is forming here. Um, I'm going to leave it in the pot for another 15 minutes to absorb as much dye as possible. It's been about 15 minutes simmering in the pot so I'm going to check with my white bowl test to see how much dye is left. And there's still a good portion of dye left in the pot. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put a lid on my dye pot and remove it from the heat and allow the skein to cool naturally in the pot. Once it's completely cooled, I will rinse it and hang it up to dry and we'll look at the final results at the end of this video. Here are my two skeins of yarn drying in my office closet. What I usually do is with my reusable zip ties, I'll just tie them around the uh, hanging rod and allow them to dry in my closet with a fan on them. Here is skein number one. It really does not make me think of the Orient Express as much as maybe a rooster or some other kind of bird. But wow, it's really dramatic. I have to say though that the red required a lot of rinsing. The black did turn out really actually very close to black, which is hard to get with food coloring on yarn. It did break a little bit there on the edge as it moved into the gold, um, which to be honest, my husband was not happy with the addition of the gold. He thought it should just be the red and black or possibly the undyed section in between. But, wow, it's really pretty. Here's the second skein. This picture is much brighter than the actual skein of yarn. It does, however, show you more of the tonal nature of the deep blue half, as well as the semi-gradient in the light blue. This picture of the twisted skein um, gives a closer representation of the true contrast between the light and dark. These two unplanned experiments are really dramatic. Honestly, I was initially disappointed with both. I came into this experiment with no expectations but also no real plan. I think I was suffering from a lack of confidence in my dyeing abilities. I keep comparing what I have done with food coloring to what indie dyers are doing. This is of course quite a foolish thing to do as they tend to use more professional acid dyes, not food coloring. 
Now, food coloring is meant for, well, food, not yarn. So I'm limited by what is possible from food coloring. But this is this so-called limitation does render some very dramatic and beautiful results. I do apologize for not being as diligent in my filming as I should be when I'm dying. Some of the recent comments coming from you all have reminded me that what I am doing is valued. For that, I thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. And if you want to see more, click subscribe. Thank you for watching.